Within a few weeks of the American election, I could see that fake news and truth were going to be incredibly important. And we did our first brand marketing campaign uh, in, I think, a decade to try and emphasize, the campaign was called The Truth Is Hard, to emphasize what we stand for, uh, which is honest, fact-based, impartial reporting. And the campaign had a big impact because I think that's front and center of our users' minds at the moment. Um, and I believe there's a battle, and I think that the, there are many people, you could say led by the President of the United States, who want to convince the world that the truth is not true, and their own version of reality, their alternative facts are the truth. And I think that things that we took for granted that everyone agreed about the basic facts about politics are no longer true. So I, I think in a way we are in the middle of a kind of conflict. And the reason we did our marketing campaign was to tell our own story in our own words. But the most important thing we're doing is continuing to invest in the expensive, complicated task of investigative and other forms of great journalism to make sure the truth is still heard. I think the fundamentals of journalism and of the tradition of serious professional journalism haven't changed and shouldn't change. I think that the, 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 what, what has changed is the idea that that kind of journalism wasn't going to be needed anymore, that citizens would do their own journalism, who's to say you know, what's true and what's, what's not true. I think that's, that's, that's fallen, fallen short. And if you take one example, without professional journalists of the New York Times and the New Yorker, we wouldn't know about Harvey Weinstein. And everything that's happened from then, all of that sense of an opening up of fundamental issues about women and men, women in the workplace, about, about respect and safety in women's lives would not have been opened up. It's a classic example about why a version of journalism using new technology, significantly digital, spread around the world digital, but still using techniques and having values which were, were there 1,500 years ago, why that kind of journalism is still really important. I think what's so exciting and interesting is that, is that the role of social media is right now under the microscope. I think the idea that social was going to be some kind of utopian way of bringing the world together, I think has been shown to be woefully naive. Um, it can do well, it can do good, it can do evil. Um, but like the telephone, it's going to be an incredibly significant way for people to talk to each other, to communicate, to share content. Um, I think we're going to have to be more careful, honestly, about our adjacencies. Uh, I think the platforms are going to have to go through a profound review of how they think about quality control and the role of human judgment in, in, in what they transmit to the world. I mean, these are potentially terrifying weapons uh, for extremists and so forth. But I'm not a pessimist. I think that ultimately, just as the telephone became just part of our lives, and if anyone said to you, is the, is the telephone morally good or bad, you'd kind of, you think, what do you mean? It's, it's what we use. It's what we use to talk to each other in certain circumstances. Social will continue to be ubiquitous um, and will continue to be an important way for publishers to get their journalism across and an important way for advertisers to reach, reach their consumers.